All right, welcome to another Boulevard paper fight. This is kind of like an unboxing slash deck evaluation. This here is a leaderboard deck with a Axiom of Grisk alternate art. So uh, let's take a look at this and see how it looks as a deck. I haven't seen any too crazy of these show up, but let's just have a look. So what have we got in here? Let's look at this from the non-Archon card perspective. The deck is called Fortune Teller Cassandra Canotail. It's got a binding irons times two, which is pretty sweet. Exhum, Festering Touch, Lilithal, not finished with you. Rock Grub, Rock Grub, Soul Fiddle, Three Fates, Harvest Time, Snaglet, Hologramophone, times two, times three, Quant, Tau Tau, Thorium Plasmate, Wild Wormhole, Wild Wormhole. Candle Unit, Data Forge, Reassembling Automaton, Seismo Entangler, and here it is, the Axiom of Grisk Alternate Art. Looks pretty sweet, I must say. This one is pretty awesome. Then it has Imperial Scutum, Quester Jarda, Raider Gallum, Tribute, City State Interest, Six Semper Tyrannus, Stomp, Compsis, Harrespect, that's pretty cool. Olivia the Elder, Tertiate, and the Colosseum. So, pretty interesting deck, but you may have noticed as we went through this that it seems to be not the most balanced. So let's kind of count things out. First, I actually want to count artifacts, which I don't normally do. Uh, well, actually, let's do Ember Pips first. So there's one... Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So fifteen ember, which is a, a nice, nice number. And now let's count artifacts. This is where things get interesting. So there's one, two, three, four, five. Six. So there's six artifacts, which I feel is is uh, pretty heavy. And now let's look at Ember Control here. So there is one, two, three, four. Five, kind of. Six, seven, eight. Eight cards have Ember Control plus an Exhum to bring maybe one of those creatures back. So, so that's good. And there's Ember Control in every house, which is nice. And now let's take a look at some of the creatures. So this is where things get interesting. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven creatures. That is very low, which is kind of interesting in a deck like this. And so I want to kind of look at the Colosseum here. So after enemy creatures are destroyed while fighting, put a glory counter on the Colosseum. See, that's going to be problematic because I don't see with eleven creatures how there's going to be a lot of fighting and destruction by enemy creatures. So this card is pretty much a dead card that will never fire. But hey, you never know. Um, see, if it was just destroyed and not fighting, this would be way better because there's so many cards that this this has for board re um, removal. The cool thing is, though, is that there is the soul fiddle, so there's ways to enrage and make the creatures have to fight. Unfortunately, that may not come into effect. 
Uh, Livia, the Elder, is pretty cool. You may exalt it, and if you do, a friendly creature's fight effects and reap effects or fight reap effects for the remainder of the turn. Unfortunately, I don't think... I'm same with this. Play effect is a reap effect, so I'm wondering if these two actually can combo off together, thinking about it. So, their fight effects and reap effects are fight reap effects. And if their play effects become reap effects, then technically it would trigger that way, which is kind of cool. Um, the Ember Control here is awesome, though. I mean, Six Semper, all that stuff is great. And then you have, there's nothing really that's super amazing for assembling Automaton to have that combo, but still a good card. Data Forge, I think, will never, ever go off. I don't see that much way of drawing and archiving. Um, there is a lot of warding, though, with Hologramophone, which is great. Honestly, having a way to triple ward is really good. The only problem is there's not a lot of creatures, so maybe useless. Uh, the Wild Wormholes, I think, are kind of problematic in this deck because you have so many actions that if they come out, you don't have control of them, and there's a lot of removal. Um, I do like the Quant non-Logos action cards, because in Logos there is only, well, there's four action cards in Logos, or five, so, yeah, again, there's there's still a lot you can use for that. Um, Snaglet's super cool, and I like that. Harvest time, purge each with a trait, and that player gains one for each card. I mean, this this could be good in multiple ways. Three Fates is always great, Enraging is always great, not finished with you with a low creature count, this could actually be really beneficial. Um, the other thing I like is the Binding Irons is great. And I don't know, I feel like the Dinos, this is the house that you really want to spend time with. Like you have the Questor Jarda, Axiom of Grisk, yeah, I find it interesting. I, I just think this this deck is a conundrum, kind of. Like, I, I don't know if it would be really good because of low creature count, but also has a lot of ember. So I'm wondering if you even, like, take your creatures and you kind of use the harvest time to purge maybe a bunch of creatures from a house you don't care about so you can cycle through to all your ember pips more and you have removal, so... It's, it's kind of interesting. This is definitely a weird deck in a way, and I actually really want to play with it now to see how it works. So there's there's not a lot of play abilities except for... Um, the only play ability I see here is actually under Rot Grub. So basically that means that Rot Grub, you can reap with it, you can play with it, and then reap with it as well. So you get both which is kind of cool. So yeah, this is a weird deck. I I don't know how to rate this one. I need to actually test it. This is one of the few times I've had a deck where I really can't give it one way or another, and I feel like it maybe would fall short in a few ways, but I also feel the lack of creatures could maybe be a bonus with this because there's so many other things you can do. Unfortunately, um, oh, I guess not unfortunately, the warding is really great because with a low creature count, being able to protect them a little bit more would be really beneficial. So that's Fortune, Fortune Teller Cassandra Canotail. And a very interesting and uh, kind of a conundrum deck, but I'm uh, curious to see how it would work because, I mean, I think four or five power is my highest. So Six Emperor Tyrannus most likely is not going to be triggering for me. So yeah, we'll... Uh, Oh, there is a five power candle unit, maybe. So very interesting. Very interesting indeed. And I like the fact that the six emperor is, um, the, the two creatures that are my biggest with five power, both have abilities that capture ember. So very interesting. So that's going to do it for today's evaluation of this really cool alternate art axiom of Grisk deck. And uh, hopefully you all enjoy this and it gave some insight. Unfortunately, I wish I could have given a little bit better review of this but this deck was a tricky one so hope everyone has a good one please like and subscribe and as always may your ember never be stolen and you forge your keys promptly have a good one